yes, Anne-Marie Waters and Islam. I've left a link below the video from uh, taken from uh, Anne-Marie Waters' YouTube channel for Britain. That's strange. Is that what she's going to call a political party when it's formed for Britain? It's very interesting if she is. I'll get back to that when I find out. But anyway, there's a link below where she's talking about UKIP's inability to talk about Islam. And anyone that did was called a racist and a Nazi and drummed up the party. Well, that may be the case. I, I don't know. That may have been the case. But it may also be that UKIP knows it's not sellable. Probably a bit of both, really. Probably a bit of cowardism. And... Um, and also, you know, it doesn't sell. Let me take you back, Miss Waters, and anyone else that's watching this, to the 1970s when the National Front was riding high. I was a proud member of the National Front. Best days of my life. But anyway, um, in the very, very early 70s, 1970s, 71, 72, mass immigration was impacting on Britain where people in certain communities, London, Birmingham, Leicester, Leicester in particular, could literally see the immigrants landing and taking over their communities. They could literally see it in front of them. So they acted upon that and they either joined, supported, marched or voted for the National Front. But now, 2017, people are used to it, you see. They're used to it, immigration and immigrants. They're used to it. So let's take the Islamic Republics as an example. Let's take Oldham, right? In Oldham, the white community and the Muslim community live, uh, you know, parallel lives, different parallel lives, where one is living an Islamic life and the other one's living a, a Western British life, right? But there's an unwritten rule, isn't there? Agreement, whatever, amongst them that you don't bother us, we won't bother you. And that's what keeps the two communities apart and it keeps a bit of peace and harmony, I suppose. Every now and then, I'm, I'm sure you've got white underclass in the white community that the white community doesn't want anywhere and doesn't care about. They'll get abused and groomed by the Muslims, right? And the whites aren't bothered because they don't want them anyway. So the grooming thing's a bit of a, it's not a vote winner. It's not a, it doesn't recruit members, it, it doesn't. It, it's, a, uh, it's a distasteful, nasty topic, isn't it? People would rather not talk about, but, uh, but anyway, normally, as a rule, there's a, a sort of unwritten agreement where you don't bother us, we won't bother you. So if Islam really was uh, bothering the British people, we'd have councillors and MPs the length and breadth of the country, but we haven't, right? And when we did have councillors in and around the Islamic republics, it's because of economic reasons that the Pakistani Bangladeshi community was getting uh, favourable treatment over the indigenous white community. An example of that was the Isle of Dogs 1993 when the Bengali community was going straight to the front of the housing queue and the whites were at the back of the housing queue. That's what got Derek Beacon elected. So this uh, mentioning Islam all the time and what they get up to and this country is going to be Sharia law in 40 years' time. No one's interested in what's happening next week, let alone 40 years' time. Female genital mutilation. That probably doesn't even affect 1% of the Muslim communities. It's a cultural thing, that, isn't it? In Africa, Somalians, is it? Whatever. Uh, or the honour killing. That's not going to uh, affect anyone in the white community. So the, the white community living parallel lives next to the Muslim community don't care about what they're doing to each other, right? There's an un... un written agreement that you don't bother us, we don't bother you. But you see, Anne-Marie Waters, Tommy Robinson, Paul Golding, Britain First, Paul Weston, Liberty GB, they are deliberately pushing for confrontation with Muslims and the Islamic religion because they know what's going to happen. It's going to go bang again, right? It's like in 2001 when the BMP was riding high. What happened? The uh, Hope Not Hate Spies go into Bradford, up it goes. Hope not hate spies going to Oldham. Up it goes. Barely, I think it was a bit different. So I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but that's what happens. And this is what they want now again. Because as I keep saying, it's the balance out the ja for the jihadi bombs uh, passed uh, and the ones that are on the way, no doubt. And also, also, it allows the government then to uh, tackle extremism, which means the white extremism 
and the Islamic Muslim extremism, bring out new laws, we need new laws, it'll tell the public. And so the new laws then are going to curtail any discussion on immigration, let alone Muslims and Islam. And this is what Anne-Marie Waters, Tommy Robinson, uh, Paul Golden, Britt Fairston, um, Paul Weston, Liberty GB, this is what they're doing. They're gearing you all up for this confrontation with Islam. They're making you believe Islam's going to destroy us and slaughter us. I'm sure, I'm sure, given the chance, a lot of them would, right? And also, when, uh, if ever the boot's on the other foot and there's more of them than us, I'm sure things will change drastically. But there's not going to be this big war with Islam. It's not happening. Once ISIS is wiped down the Middle East, I believe a lot of these terrorist attacks will stop, right? Then what happens? How do you deal with it then? Well, you've got to deal with it on an economic level. All the immig immigrants that are coming into the country, it's affecting us. Uh, the, our resources, our services are being impacted by mass immigration. This is how we deal with it. But they don't want that. They want confrontation. Okay, thank you.